The RTX 5080 is NVIDIA's second highest GPU this generation. Did NVIDIA deceive us on the performance of the 5080 at CES? And do the new leaks give us a true estimate of the performance we can expect? Let's get into it. The RTX 5080 is the second highest GPU this generation behind the 5090. And if the leak pricing of the 5090, firmly in the low to upper $2,000 range, is too much for your budget, then maybe the 5080 is the next logical upgrade for you. There are people suggesting that the 5080 will perform as well as the 4090 and could become the second fastest gaming GPU. Why would people think that? NVIDIA. When Jensen made his keynote address on January the 6th at CES, NVIDIA also released performance charts on their website. I looked at those charts and counted pixels to calculate the performance uplift, and I shared those in a previous video. With the 5090, I calculated a 28% uplift. I only focused on this one game since it was the only one that did not have DLSS on. It did have ray tracing on. However, if you know anything about Far Cry 6, it is a rather light implementation of ray tracing, meaning that when you turn on ray tracing, the actual reduction in frame rates is rather mild, on the order of about 10 to 15% for NVIDIA GPUs. Even Radeon GPUs are only affected a little bit more. So for me, that was a good representation of the improvement of rasterization we could expect. Then on January 15th, NVIDIA removed the original chart and they replaced it with a new chart. NVIDIA removed Far Cry 6 and replaced it with Resident Evil 4 as the only game with DLSS not enabled. After counting pixels, the uplift of Resident Evil 4 is 31%. So now we're looking at a 28 to 31% improvement. Does that mean the original Far Cry 6 results are not valid? NVIDIA did not say. With the reviews out for the 5090, we see computer base at about a 24% uplift overall, hardware and box showing about 27%, and tech power up showing 35%. So NVIDIA's two games of 28 to 31% was very representative of the uplift we saw in the reviews. Thank you, NVIDIA. Now let's look at the 5080 results. On January 6th, the uplift in Far Cry 6 is 33%. Wait, that's a bigger uplift than the 5090. 33% faster than a 4080 would be faster than a 4090. Well, on January 15th, NVIDIA replaces the original chart and removes Far Cry 6 and replaces it with Resident Evil 4. The problem is, the uplift is only 15%. Far Cry 6 was 33%, and now Resident Evil is 15? Does that mean the Far Cry 6 results before were not valid? NVIDIA did not say. But how can they be so different? On the 5090, the Resident Evil uplift was very similar to Far Cry, just a 3% different. It's very close. On the 5080, the Resident Evil uplift is less than half of that originally reported for Far Cry 6. These two games can't be almost the same uplift on a 5090 and then be more than twice the difference on a 5080. Both of these things can't be true. One of these things is false. Did Nvidia pull the old switcheroo on the 5080? That 33% doesn't make sense and I'll tell you why. If you just compare the specs of the GPUs and there are only four that you really need to focus on, the first one is how many shaders, or NVIDIA likes to call them CUDA cores. Now CUDA cores are counted in the thousands and those large numbers are just too big for my simple brain. I like to break those down to compare streaming multiprocessors. What are streaming multiprocessors? It is simply a grouping of CUDA cores into a processing unit. In the last three architectures, that grouping is 128 CUDA cores into one SM. So if you divide the number of CUDA cores by 128, you'll end up with the number of SMs. The 5090 saw an increase of 33% over the 4090. The second spec you want to focus on is the boost clock speed. Ignore the base clock speed. For the boost clock speed, you only focus on the delta since the absolute clock speed of these GPUs is typically a little bit higher. Now the 5090 sees a slight reduction of 4% over the 4090, and that is needed to stay within its power budget. The third item is memory bandwidth, and that is dependent on the memory chip speed and the width of the memory bus communicating back to the GPU die. The 5090 with GDDR7 and the move to a 512-bit bus had a massive improvement over the 4090 of 77%. 
Finally, the fourth spec is the total graphics power, and the 5090 saw an increase of 28%. And when you put all of these together, you get a 33% uplift in shaders, a slight pullback in clock speed, a massive increase in memory bandwidth, and an increase in power by 28%. With NVIDIA's original claims of 28% in Far Cry 6 and 31% in Resident Evil 4, that correlates very well to the reviews where we saw the overall uplift of 24 to 35%. Now, let's do that same exercise on the 5080, and in this chart, we're comparing the 5080 to the 4080, just like NVIDIA did. For the increase in the number of SMs or shaders, we see the 5080 increase by 10.5%. That's only one third as much as the 5090. For the boost clock speed, we only see a slight increase of 4.4%. The memory bandwidth did jump by 34% by moving to GDDR7, but that was half as much as on the 5090. Finally, the total graphics power goes up by 12.5%, again, less than half of the 5090. And putting it all together, the 10.5%, 4%, 34%, 12%, and then adding NVIDIA's claims of 33% for Far Cry 6 and 15% for Resident Evil 4, that 33% really starts to stick out and look out of place. Let's add in the 5090 comparison that did correlate well to reviews. And looking over that chart, there is no improvement in the key specs that is going to push the 5080 to 33% over the 4080. And now we have some leaks. The first one was by Reddit user TruthPhoenix5 that found an entry in the Blender Open Data platform with a 5080 scored 9.4% faster than a 4080. The second comes from a couple of time spy scores for the alleged 5080. The first user leaked a GPU score of 32701, which is 15% higher than a 4080 Super and 16% higher than a 4080. And that would correlate very well to the Resident Evil 4 result NVIDIA posted on January 15th. It also means it would fall short of a 4090 by about 10%. Another leaker on chip held overclocked their 5080 and said that they were able to achieve 34,896, which is now less than 5% away from a 4090, but it's still behind. These scores also indicate the 5080 will leapfrog AMD's RX 7900 XTX, which is averaging about 30,500 in times by GPU to make it the third fastest GPU in the world. This generational lift in the mid-teens is about half of what we saw with the 5090. Seems like the low levels of generational uplift we saw in the 60 series of GPUs last generation, you know, where the 4060 only provided an 18% uplift over the 3060, and where the 4060 Ti only provided an 11% uplift over the 3060 Ti. These mediocre levels are now making its way to 80 series buyers this generation. To look at it another way, the low levels of generational improvements for three to $400 GPUs are now making its way to $1,000 and up GPUs. With no competition from AMD at the high end, Nvidia is not pushing the performance. How long can we go before people say enough? One thing I hate is when large companies like NVIDIA hide stuff. We don't know if the Far Cry 6 result they originally posted for the 5080 is correct or not. I would bet all that I own that it is not. But if it was a mistake, all they needed to do was just put a footnote and say, oops, we made a mistake. Here's some updated results. Instead, they just removed that result and replaced it with something lower. It just comes across like they're hiding something, or worse, they are misrepresenting the performance of the 5080 intentionally. NVIDIA, nobody likes the old switcheroo. Like it if you learned something, share it, subscribe for more. Click on one of these for my thoughts on the other GPUs. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.